started. Good evening. Uh, I want to welcome you to tonight's meeting. Uh, my name is Chris Schmidt. I'm a senior transportation planner for Caltrans, and I was asked to kind of help get this started and kick things off. Okay. So with that, um, let me let me jump into why we're here tonight. Um, and it's really about this project. It's the freeway cap best practices and SR94 cap park study. It's something that uh, folks have requested uh, us to undertake. We've cobbled together the money. We've hired a consultant that I introduced to you in a second. And we're going to get that kicked off here tonight. And that's, that's primarily the reason. I also want to acknowledge and, and mention that I understand a lot of folks are also very interested in the SR94 express lanes project. And that's the uh, the project that you probably heard a lot about, the HOV lanes uh, on, on 94. And I just want to mention and, and let you know that uh, with respect to that project, Caltrans and Sandang have been listening to the community. And consequently, as a result of those discussions and, and some of the issues that have been raised about that, uh, those agencies are working with the city of San Diego to discuss all available options for the draft environmental document. Updates to the scope and schedule of that document will be forthcoming in the very near future, but we don't have that information here tonight. So I'm hoping that you know, the conversation and what we can talk about tonight will be about this rather than about the other. So with that, um, we're gonna do what it says on the agenda here tonight. Um, if you didn't pick one of these up, let me just real quickly let you know what we're doing. We're going to dispense with my introduction here in a second. We're gonna have a nice presentation kind of reviewing what are cap parks, what are they all about, um, just to kind of get uh, everyone oriented. And then the intent is really to break out into some work groups and get your feedback, your input, and hear what you have to say so we can take that into account as we develop these ideas and work with you to do that. We're then gonna have some reporting out so we can share that, answer some questions, talk about some next steps, and make sure everyone knows kind of how to be part of this process. So that's. That's the agenda for this evening. And a couple other things that I just want to bring to your attention and, and, and point out for you. Um, the study is, as I mentioned, based on the feedback that we received from the community as part of some planning efforts that have gone on, not only for the express lane project, but also for um, um, the community plan updates that you've heard some, something about, hopefully. So I just want to um, take an opportunity uh, to uh, uh, basically uh, make it really clear what the intent is. Let me go to slide two here. And slide two is, um, excuse me, I gotta do two things at once. There we go. That's, that's the purpose and need of the study, to assess the best practices for the CAP and to engage the community. Those are really the two primary things. And the best practices is something that we're devoting a significant amount of time to, as you'll hear a little later, because this is not an issue just in San Diego, it's actually an issue around the state. And it's something that we're, we're all grappling with to try to understand what, what can be done, what should be done, how should it be done, et cetera. Okay, so I wanna um, introduce a few people just so you know who, who's on the team and who's participating. And first, I'd like to introduce Molly Chase from uh, Council Member Gloria's office and ask her to come up and just say a couple of words. Chris, I just really want to quickly uh, welcome everyone and thank you for being here. I see a lot of my community members and residents um, locally and then also our working group members. Um, this kind of process all started from a request by Councilmember Gloria to really talk, take what we've heard in the community and what a lot of the work that had already been done really about at the time what we, everyone was calling a super deck and figure out ways that we could really study this and have experts come in to look at that and engage the community. So I want to thank Caltrans and Sandag. They found the money, they made it happen. It took a little bit longer than we all thought, but we're here today and we have a great team. Um, I'm really grateful that uh, PB is on board and we look forward to kind of seeing what can happen here. So um, I will be here and kind of involved in this process as it moves forward, but I just want to really thank everyone and I will be here after if you have any other questions. Thanks, Molly, very much. So real quick, um, the next thing I want to do is kind of introduce to you uh, this idea of a stakeholder working group. Um, that was a, a part of um, Council Member Gloria's request. And, and what is the role of this stakeholder working group? It's really these four things. is to stay involved in the study throughout so that there are people always participating, bring community perspective and insights, things that, that really they know best because they live in the community, they, they, they are engaged in what goes on in the community, can bring that to the process. They can act as a conduit to the community 
in which they live and share the progress of the study so that they can also take the information back and say, hey, where are these guys at? What's been going on? This is what the progress is being made. Come to a meeting next Tuesday, those sorts of things. And finally, shape the outcomes of the study and next steps at the conclusion of the study effort. What do we do with all this once we figure something out? What happens next? So that we have a group of people who are fully engaged in that as well. Is kind of launch into an overview of kind of what these park decks are about. And what I want to do first is uh, untangle myself here and turn this uh, over to Connery. Um, Connery's done some homework, some background. I think it's helpful to kind of set the stage for that. So we'll turn it over to him. He's got a nice presentation that hopefully will whet everyone's appetite as to what can be done, what others have done with cap parks around the country. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Connery Cepeda. I'm the assigned project manager uh, for this CAP study. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for, for coming out. Uh, as, as you can tell from the introductions, we have a, a great team. We have a lot of people uh, putting this together, but it, it, we're really here to hear from the community, so it, it, it would not be worth it if, if the community is not here to be heard. So thank you for, for joining us. Uh, the intent, uh, I really want to get to point four, the group assignment, where we can really uh, gain some more uh, community input on what a CAP could be. Uh, I don't want to, uh, the intent is for this to not be death by PowerPoint, uh, but I do want to uh, show what our project team has, has, has researched so far and to really show and, and maybe inspire, bring some inspiration as to what a freeway CAP is and what it can do uh, for a community. So we have Parsons Brinkerhoff as our consultant team, and they have, done, they have worked on some freeway CAP projects uh, throughout the United States, but spe specifically on the West Coast. So I wanted to show you some images of the ones in bold, starting from Seattle and working our way down. And just so that everyone uh, is clear too, just a, a brief definition of freeway CAP is, is just that. Uh, they're also called, a, they can be called a deck or a lid, and I'm sure we've heard all, all kinds of terminology for that, but a cap uh, is, is a concrete structure that's built to cover a segment of freeway that is below grade. So here are some examples of Seattle. Seattle is currently building three caps over their freeway uh, and they're currently under construction. Uh, at, these photos are from earlier this year. Here we have a traffic circle or a roundabout for the transportation walks uh, built over a freeway. And again, these are just some quick photos to, to show what's being done around the country, again in Seattle. Uh, this one being more of a, of a park use, and yes, there is a freeway underneath that. Uh, moving, up, moving further south to Portland, Oregon, this is uh, what, they've, what the community vision uh, has entailed. The Parsons Brinkerhoff, they, they've done some outreach uh, in the late 90s, and some of the outreach that they did was innovative. They, they did some of the pop-up outreach. So it's not just these community meetings, but having chalkboards and, and things that are, that are out there uh, so that the community can provide input day and night uh, on what they want in a cap. And then they also had a working group. And at the end, this is the proposal that they have and they're currently looking for funding. And then uh, this one in Sacramento. Uh, this is just showing kind of uh, an existing condition over I-5. This is the ultimate community vision process. It would be two city blocks, one of which would be a, a park use, and another uh, city block would be for a development. Uh, however, this is an example of a phasing approach because they came up with a community vision, but then when it came time for costs, it, it, it proved to be, uh, for the time being, uh, too cost prohibitive, but they didn't want to just let it die, so they, they wanted to how do we phase it in? And so they're introducing new uh, pedestrian bi bicycling uh, connections across the freeway. And then the, the cap can, once more funding is, is brought in, the cap can kind of fill in the gaps of those new connections across the freeway. Uh, so moving further south here, we are in San Francisco. This is Doyle Drive, which is uh, as you approach the Golden Gate Bridge on the northwest uh, corner of San Francisco. And this is under construction. I got to see this myself last month, uh, where this is actually not even a cap or a deck or a lid. This is a tunnel because the freeway is not below grade. It's above grade. But because of the topography as part of the project, they were able to uh, 
essentially create a tunnel that then connects Presidio National Park with Chrissy Field and the waterfront. And then uh, moving up to our neighbors in Los Angeles, uh, they have several proposals uh, for cap parks in Ventura and Hollywood, but these being specific uh, to downtown, uh, when they were doing their analysis, they, they were looking back at their history with their historic core, and then trenches that happened in the 50s and 60s that divided communities. And so they wanted to come up with a vision, how do we reconnect these communities again? And they ultimately came up with a vision similar to what Portland did. Uh, they got some urban designers, landscape architects together, and came up with this grand vision. And so uh, this is known as Park 101, and anyone that wants more information, if you go to park101.org, uh, they have posted uh, many videos and, and photos of this vision. This is uh, how it looks right now. This is existing downtown Los Angeles, and then this is the ultimate community vision. So again, it's almost one of those uh, uh, photos worth a thousand, thousand words. And then of course, right here in San Diego, this, in part the inspiration for this study is that we have a cap right here in, in actually City Heights, uh, Taralta Park, so we can learn uh, from that effort as well. Specifically for San Francisco, but I think for most of them, how, how are they funded? Where did the money come from? Um, and that I do not have an answer to that question, and that, that's part of the research. We want to find out how all of these cities were able to fund them. Uh, just from, from what I briefly learned, there were a lot of public-private partnerships. Uh, so it's not just a public agency, it's not just a city or a county or a regional agency paying for it. Uh, some private funds also came in. Uh, so it's really uh, a lot of pots of money that, that, that came in. But that's something that we want to learn as we start researching how other cities did. So study steps and schedule. I do want to acknowledge that almost two years ago, we were in this very same room, or at least I was, uh, to talk about the 94 Express Lanes project. And there were a series of community enhancements projects uh, community enhancements workshops, excuse me, and that's, we had already heard before that there was community interest in a cap over Highway 94, and we were able to uh, gain, gain a lot more, we got over 300 comments in that workshop right here in Sherman Heights, 70, about 70 of those comments were specific to a cap. And so this is a sampling of some of the comments that we heard two years ago from this community. Um, what other cities have these? Uh, the cap can suppress noise, dust. Uh, there, there was a question about what materials to use for the cap. Where would the money come from? Uh, we heard that loud and clear. We, had, we got some ideas of what could be put on the cap. How about sports fields? There's a strong need for parks, uh, gathering places and buildings too. But um, question about maintenance. How do we maintain it? But really at the bottom right, that this is a rare opportunity that could last decades, I think that, I hope that that can provide some inspiration because yes, this is another planning study, but these things, you know, they, they start from somewhere and hopefully that for the long haul, these, th these things may take years, but uh, it, it is important to, to stick this out to really uh, follow through on the community vision. But specifically for this CAP study, uh, Molly hinted at it that it, it did take from 2013 to right now, it did take some time to uh, get some funding for this planning study. But now that we have the funding, we have a mandate uh, around this time next year, June 2016, to complete this. Uh, and then this is a, the schedule that right now we're proposing. So earlier today, I met with five of the seven um, working group members, stakeholder working group members, to kind of get their feedback, and I've already started uh, getting, getting that feedback. And then right now we're at the kickoff, and we anticipate having um, about four more meetings between now and the end of next year. So during the summer, we anticipate continuing to engage with the community. We're gathering advice as to how to best, best do so, whether it's going out to farmers markets or taking advantage of social media. Uh, Really, you know, so that if you, did, if you could not attend this meeting, that does not mean that you cannot provide, provide input. We will continue to, to engage with the community so that by the fall, around the September, October timeframe, we can come back, perhaps even in this room again, to do a more detailed design workshop, whether it's a, it's a charrette 
or where we can bring on some urban designers and landscape architects and answer some more specific questions. But I think today we want the, the idea, we just want to get some general ideas. What are some of the, what are some ideas that people have for the CAP? As well as uh, what, what's the underlying issue? Like is it to, to provide connections across the, the freeway that were, the, the freeway having severed the community ties from decades ago? Uh, we, we, want to, we want to get as much of that input as we can. Everything under the, the top, the blue, is the outreach. That's kind of the face of the project. Everything in dark green will be going on behind the scenes. So that's what uh, the consultant team will be helping us uh, with as well, to do some background research as to what, what other cities have done and how did they accomplish it. So the, the cap, uh, it did come out of the Express Lanes project. Uh, initially, about two years ago, when uh, there were some, a lot of workshops about the Express Lanes project, that's where the genesis, that's where the idea came from of, hey, let's study a cap. Since then, the, the, the two are now separated so that a cap is not dependent on the Express Lanes project. One can happen without the other. So as we move forward uh, and we, we keep studying the cap, am I? Planning study has been approved. Yes, the planning, and that, no, that's okay, and that takes about a year, and then from there we would then follow up with, with Caltrans, Sandac, City of San Diego on next steps to get it environmentally cleared and to fund construction. Thank you so much for, for bringing that up. Uh, I, I've been involved on and off for the past two years, but I, I have much to learn uh, from everyone in the room here today. So you're right, this is beyond, beyond two years. So this slide just emphasizes again what Chris mentioned, the reason why we're even doing this study is to, on the one hand, do the best practices, follow up on how other cities did this, but then also engage with the community, specifically Golden Hill and Sherman Heights, on uh, a community vision for reconnecting those communities and whether a cap is, is really the best way to go about this. If it is, what could go on the cap? What, is, is parks the most pressing need? Is it development? Is it a transit center? Uh, and right now we're gathering all of that feet. We want to hear from the community on what, what's needed and, and how a CAP can address it. And during this process, Seth Torma with the consultant team, during this process, you'll see when we come back here in the fall for Design Charette, which will really get into details of what would a vision of a park here look like based on your input. When we do that, between now and then, what we will be doing is looking at the current plans as they are for the existing SR94 and any proposed plans for the Express Lanes project. And we'll be looking at constraints and opportunities across those plans. So the answer to your question is yes, when we go through that design process, that, that slight design process that we'll be going through over the summer, we'll be looking at is a park cap feasible with the proposed proposals on the SR94 and or would it work with the existing? So we will know that to a certain degree through this design process. And then to answer the previous question about the funding, the, to answer the funding question is there is no funding in the region right now for any park caps anywhere. That's where we stand today. How did the other part of this study and one of the major, one of the major goals of this study is not only this visioning process, but is a resource not just for this region, but frankly for the state and other states who are looking at similar opportunities to understand when it was done elsewhere, how did it happen? And so that best practices research that we're gonna be doing as part of this study, that's the other goal of this project, is to discover those answers along the way. We're not there yet, we don't know. Um, we certainly have worked on, or our firms have worked on, and we'll be looking at and engaging the people that have worked on successful park caps throughout the country, but that's part of what we wanna understand through this process. So no funding is available today, as it stands, <coughs> And part of the process will be to look for how have other people funded these projects? Is there data out there? That's one of the things that we will be looking at. In fact, one of the examples you saw in Portland was a visioning process just like this that happened in the late 90s that hasn't occurred yet. You saw others that went through this process that did, and as part of that, we'll be looking at it. Whether we'll have an exact probability of 8%, 25% for you, I don't know. We'll see what we can get and what data is out there, but we'll look at that. Yeah. But we want, we want to be clear about moving forward where, where those opportunities lie. Right now, there is zero funding for a single park cap anywhere in this region as proposed. 
it's an intense workshop where we're literally going to roll up our sleeves and draw stuff. And at the end of it, there will be drawings of whatever might be uh, the ultimate vision of what a cap at that location would look like. So maybe I should answer that since I gave you the statement about the, the 94 project. <clears throat> I think what Seth and, and Connery are both trying to articulate is that the commitment is to look at any and all options based on what may or may not happen with 94. This team does not know what may or may not happen with 94. And I think what Seth is getting at, we know that there is a current vision for that based on the environmental document. There's also the no bill, which is the existing condition. And then there are concerns, the ones like you're raising today, that are also out there. And I think all of that can be looked at as part of this process. And that's, that's really why this meeting is so important, to get those ideas to these facilitated groups and get those on paper so that this team knows to look at all that. <laughs> so you're bringing up a good point, right? And so the question is how much budget would we have to do that? What you're talking about doing is probably very intensive in terms of really looking at full blown analysis. I think the economic analysis can be done at a high level. A number of studies around the country can probably be cited as to what the economic development opportunities were with the decks that have been developed elsewhere, the result, in essence, of the investment that was made. Can we do that specifically for a specific project that this process comes up with? Yeah, you would have to kind of, you know, sort of extrapolate and maybe do a little bookending and say, you know, my cost between this and this, and we generate this and this kind of economic development opportunity. So I think we can do some of that. Probably not sort of to the investment grade level that someone might want to actually say, wow, sounds great. Let me invest because this sounds like something I'd want to do. This is great feedback, and I think that's the kind of stuff we want to capture through these breakouts and then use that feedback to guide what this team does as it moves forward. So as you can tell, I might be project manager, but I don't have answers to many questions. <laughs> I do appreciate getting these questions. This is the kind of feedback we want so that when we come back in subsequent meetings, we can get answers to these questions. And we want to ensure that this study is addressing really what the community needs. So again, going back to this slide, just re-emphasizing uh, what this study will look at. There's the best practices component, a lot of background research that the consultant team will do so that we can take it and use it as a, as a model statewide. Uh, for Caltrans, but then specific to this community, we want to engage and develop a vision that then could be taken forward uh, into the future to whether it's a cap or whether it's something else, we really want to uh, have that really develop a vision. And with that, then I will transfer it over. I, I see where you're coming from. And I think, you know, as we articulate, we wanted to get this done sooner and get this started sooner. The reality is it doesn't always work that way. I think what Dave said earlier, there is an environmental process for the State Route 94 express lanes. And where that goes and whether the project gets funded or doesn't get funded and moves forward, what we're trying to do, do this process as rapidly and as informed as we can with all the involvement that we can to cast a vision as to what should happen. And the question does become to some extent, what does that mean in terms of the expressway project or any other transportation improvement that might, might be made to State Route 94? And it would be wonderful if everything could happen simultaneously. And so, yes, people need to be engaged and aware that there are two things happening. And, and we, we're certainly aware of it. And there's nothing that we're trying to do to sort of pre-front load anything, right? We're just trying to do what we've been asked to do and hopefully inform the public and decision makers as to the value of doing a cap park and take that into consideration relative to any improvements to State Route 94.